Jannat min al-Huda wal Furqan. That this is a month, Shahru Ramadan. Ramadan is a month, الذي أنزل في القرآن أنزل فيه القرآن. That in it, the Quran was revealed. What is this Quran? Hudan للناس. It's a guidance for all of humanity. وبينات من الهدى. It's not just a guidance for all of humanity. It's a clear, established guidance. والفرقان. And the criterion between good and bad. What is right, what is wrong. It is the criterion, it is the decider to tell us what is worthy, what is not worthy. What is good, what is not good. What is bad, what is evil. And so on. What is truth, what is not. So this is a criterion. A decider between truth and falsehood. So we know the Quran was revealed as a guidance. Now this guidance either is going to be abstract. Right? It's going to be something that's non-material, something that's very uh, theoretical, or it's something that's practical. And this is the objective of why the revelation was given. And Allah tells us this is the reason why. He says in the Quran, to the, our Prophet, he is addressing our Prophet alayhi salatu wa taslim. He says, "Inna anzalna ilayk al kitab bil haq. Inna anzalna ilayk ilayk al kitab bil haq. Indeed, inna indeed we have anzalna ilayk. We have revealed to you al kitab, the book. Ain't the book of Moses. Ain't the book of Jesus. Ain't the book of any other prophets. It's the Quran." Bilhaq of the truth. Why? Why? لِتَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا أَرَاكَ Allah. Allah gives a reason. We don't have to speculate. He's given us the reason. لِتَحْكُمَ So you can judge and rule the people بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Amongst the people بِمَا أَرَاكَ Allah. With what Allah, with God, has shown you. So you can rule the people. You can judge the people. You can arbitrate between the people with what we have revealed. And in fact, this is the objective of why God gave revelation to all the prophets. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمَ الْكِتَابَ Why? وَالْمِزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسَ بِالْقِسْطِ وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ And we have sent our messengers with the clear proofs بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب and we have sent with each of them a book, a revelation and a balance, a mizan, a criterion why? ليقوم الناس بالقسط so we can establish justice on the earth we can establish justice on the earth that's why revelation is there really to bring justice Allah doesn't want misery on the earth. Does Allah want misery on the earth for people? It's people that create the misery. They say, "Innama nahnu muslihun." Allah, inna humu humul mufsidun. People say, "Oh, oh, we're we're just we're creating islah on the earth. We're reforming the earth, <coughs> making people better." Inna humul mufsidun. Actually, they are the people who are creating fasad and corruption on the earth. It's not Allah that creates corruption on the earth. That, uh, people do it. It's not Allah. Revelation is الْقِسْطِ To judge people with justice. That is the purpose of revelation. But the way Allah has shown and wants people to live by it. Not the way man and human beings decide. So what is it? What is it then that the Qur'an was revealed for? It was revealed to be implemented. But we need to ask ourselves a question, my dear brothers. To what extent? Let's just, before we go on, a, on to a general point, let's just ask ourselves, to what extent is the Qur'an being a practical implementation in our own personal lives? To what extent are we measuring our lives up to the Qur'an? To, you know, to what extent are we measuring ourselves first, let's just ask the question, then we can take the question broader. To what extent are we measuring ourselves to this standard in the Qur'an? Yes, we could pray, we could fast, we could do our extra devotions, we could do our hajj, we could do our umrah, we can do these things, but they should not be, they should not be restricted to those actions. They need to, 
every aspect of our, ni our lives needs to be measured up to the Qur'an. Whether that means our job, whether that means our social engagement, our political en engagement, whatever sphere of our life is, has to be in accordance with the standard brought by the revelation, by the guidance brought by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know this was the Prophet's character. كَانَ خُلُقُهَا Quran, As Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Umm al she says, كَانَ خُلُقُهَا Quran, يَمْشِي عَلَى الْعَرْضِ He's a Qur'an that was walking on the earth. Qur'an walking on the earth. Just as a wider point, even if in our individual lives we are not living and measuring our, ourselves to the standards of the Qur'an, we know our societies are not. All levels of our society are not measuring up to the standards of the Qur'an. And really, my dear brothers, this is the point we need to remember. This is the point we need to remember, that this is the night in which the Qur'an was revealed. Why was the Qur'an revealed? It was revealed to be implemented. And look at us, look at, look at the world, look at any of our societies, look at our, our countries. How short we've fallen from implementing the Qur'an on every level. On all aspects of our society, individual, personal, domestic, social, economic, political, whatever level it is, the Qur'an is not being implemented. It's not being implemented the way Allah wants it. It's just been left on the shelf, read maybe one, once a year in the month of Ramadan for some people. Or when there's an occasion like a funeral, they'll take it out and read it. Or maybe when suddenly they feel bad, they'll open the Quran and read it. It's just sitting there on the shelf, in a beautiful cloth, on the highest shelf. That's not the reason why it was revealed. And I want to end, very another short time is short, with a hadith that the Messenger of Allah والتسليم, was talking with his Sahabas. And really, this is the hadith definitely of our times. That the Prophet was with, of course, his companions. And the hadith goes like this. I want to read it. it, it, it we we'll get some barakah for reading it as well. And that way we can at least appreciate the how, how is this hadith relevant to our, our times. Okay. When knowledge was disappearing, or with regards to knowledge disappearing, some of the Sahaba asked a question to the Prophet. So one of the Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, كَيْفَ يَذْهَبُ وَنَحْنُ نَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ So the Prophet was talking to the Sahabas about knowledge is going to disappear. Knowledge is going to disappear. And then the Sahaba uh, asked, one of the Sahabis asked, Ziyadi bin Labid, he asked, Ya Rasulullah, how can, the, no, how can knowledge disappear? كَيْفَ يَذْهَبُ وَنَحْنُ نَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ how can knowledge disappear when we are reading the Qur'an? We're reciting the Qur'an. And you know, we recite the Qur'an, our children recite it, and our children recite it to their children. Until the last day. How is knowledge going to disappear so long as we're reciting the Qur'an? I'm going to recite it, my kids are going to recite it, my kids' kids are going to recite it, my kids' grandchildren, and so on and so on. Every Muslim's... Yeah, they're going to recite the Qur'an until the end, end of time. So how is knowledge going to disappear? And then what did the best of creation say? Alayhi salatu wa taslim. He said, Thakalata ummak ya labin. Or ya ziyad. May your mother weep. Or it's a very serious way to saying, don't you get it? Yeah? He's saying, don't you, don't you get it? That, may your mother weep over you. It's like the expression the Arabs use. Like, this is serious. Like, don't you get it? What you're asking. You're saying, you're asking me, how is knowledge going to disappear when people are reading the Qur'an? And now the Prophet explains how this is going to happen. So he says to, to Ziyad ibn Labid, he says, Kuntu la min afqahi rajul Medina. I thought you were a very intelligent person from Medina. You are one of the most knowledgeable people from Medina. And you're asking me how knowledge is going to disappear. The Prophet is using this style to teach his companions that this is a serious matter. And he says, don't you see the Jews and the Christians reading their books? Don't you see the Christians and the Jews recite their book, but they don't act upon it? Don't you see how the Jews and the Christians are doing? They read their books, they just read it, but they do not act upon its teachings. This is what the Prophet feared for his Ummah. 
that we will read the Quran and that is it. That is